Hey everyone, it's Thomas DeLauer and I'm gonna take you back to biology class for a little bit. I'm gonna make it entry level, I'm gonna make it super simple so that you know how much fat you can have in one sitting. But before you know how much fat you can have in one sitting, you need to understand a little bit about how fat is actually absorbed in the body. So I'm gonna break it down. Let's take a little ride on consuming some fat all the way through the mouth, through the intestinal tract and into the bloodstream from soup to nuts on how this whole thing works. You see, it all begins as soon as you take a bite of something with some fat in it. You see, lipase starts the process of breaking down fats as soon as it hits your mouth, but then it goes into your stomach and it starts to break down even more. Okay, and it all happens because of gastric lipase and pancreatic lipase, which I'll explain in a second. You see, fats are made up of three fatty acids bound to a glycerol molecule. Okay, so they're bound together. That is known as a lipid. So then what happens, you consume that lipid your stomach breaks it down about 10%. Okay, so 10%, just a small amount, and that's done by gastric lipase. And what that does is that takes those three fatty acid molecules that are bound to the glycerol and removes two of them. So two of them are now gone and you're left with one individual. Then the next step moves on into the small intestine. Once it moves on into the small intestine, there's something else called pancreatic lipase that kicks in. This pancreatic lipase breaks down it even more. It breaks down those two fatty acids that are still bound and now breaks them all down into individual lipid droplets. Almost usable form. Now remember, fat is never fully dissolved. It does not dissolve in water. The only thing that we do is further emulsify it further and further and further until it's small enough to be absorbed, but it never fully dissolves. Now this pancreatic lipase does its job, starts breaking down the fat even more, but then it has a little helper. It has a helper called colipase. This colipase breaks down the fat even more, but it helps the lipase activate and access the fat inside the droplet, basically unleashing the power of the fat to yield energy on the body. So then your gallbladder secretes something called bile. And this bile breaks down everything that we have here and puts it into something called a micelle. And those micelles are the root of fat metabolism. So now that they are in this micelle, Okay, the gallbladder's done its job, it's broken it down even more into a really small form, it's in a micelle. Well now this micelle can actually stick to the cell wall of the intestines. And what happens there is nothing short of amazing. This is how fat is absorbed. Okay, so the micelle sits inside the cell of our intestines and then hops on board something called a chylomicron. Now hear me out because this is fascinating. I was blown away when I started doing research on this. Think of a chylomicron like a train, okay? This chylomicron carries the fat, it carries proteins, and it also carries cholesterols, okay? And it carries them individual of everything else. Now mind you, those fats that have been broken down into small pieces are now reformed into usable fat again, into a bigger form. But here's the interesting thing. These chylomicrons don't absorb into the bloodstream. They absorb into the lymphatic system, into the lymph, into the lymph fluid. So they have their own special express lane. Okay, so that train they got on, think of it like a light rail system. While everything else is sitting in traffic in the bloodstream, the fats, the proteins, and the cholesterols are traveling with the lymph to get where they need to go. Pretty fascinating. It's proof right then and there how important fats are to overall metabolism, right? Then once they get to their destination, that's when they're unleashed into the bloodstream and actually utilized for fuel or utilized for storage. They all come back together and are in a position to let our bodies thrive on them. But how much fat can you have in one sitting? How much can your gallbladder handle? How much can your intestinal system handle? Well, quite frankly, it's a tough one to answer because everyone responds different. You've talked to some people that say they eat fats and they feel really sick, or some people don't have a gallbladder at all, so they have a really hard time. But let's talk about ketosis simply because it's hot right now, and I think it has the most applicable direction for what I'm talking about. You see, ketosis, when your body's utilizing fats for fuel instead of carbs, our bodies get very efficient at utilizing fats. This means that the body gets better at emulsifying. You sort of become an emulsification machine. And I've kind of done the liberty of breaking it down and looking at roughly how much fat you should be taking in based on calories. Now, mind you, you're gonna to wanna to split this up throughout the course of the day and not do it in one sitting. So generally speaking, you wanna be doing about 60 to 75% of your calories from fat in a ketogenic diet. So if you're on a 1500 calorie diet, you're looking somewhere in the world of 87 grams of fat to maybe 111 grams of fat. 
If you're on a 2,000 calorie diet, you're looking at somewhere around 111 grams of fat to 157 grams of fat. Then if you're on a 2,500 calorie diet, you're looking somewhere in the spectrum of 139 grams to probably 207 grams of fat. Sounds like a lot of fat because it is, but that's the whole idea behind ketosis. So the whole idea is you want to split those up evenly. But now you have an understanding of how fat is absorbed in the body. It may give you a little bit more appreciation. You see, they're not absorbed super fast like carbohydrates are. They have a process. It takes a lot of energy, it takes a lot of calories to actually digest and burn a fat in the first place. So if you have any ideas on other videos that you'd like to be coached on or things you'd like to learn, make sure you comment and let me know. But also make sure that you hit that subscribe button. Do yourself a service by learning and getting coached. But also it's a huge favor for me just to see that you're learning and to see that what I'm putting out there is actually helping you, especially if you click subscribe. So I'll see you in the next video.